It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the retro game 16-bit video game system from FIHO. I grew up myself with Sega Mega Drive, Genesis known in the US, and I love myself the Sega. They had so many great games, and I just want to check out if you can find like replacement units in China. I've reviewed a couple of these devices, and oh boy, finding a good one, that's the biggest challenge. The Retro Game 16-bit video game system, also called the ZD-01A. The first common problem with these devices is that finding one that had like exactly the same sound like the original one, and that's going to be challenging. Another thing is like nowadays we're having a lot of flat panels, LCDs, whatever, but we just want to have an HDMI functionality. And what you can see over here, this one doesn't have this option. Some of them even have an SD function, so like a built-in EverDrive, but this one doesn't also have an built in EverDrive. The question remains, what does this thing have and what can we do with it? Because when it comes to the audio, there we go to get the biggest challenge. And also we go to test it out with my favorite game, Street of Rage 2. All right, so let's open it up. Uh, let's be gentle because I want to keep the box in good condition. Oh crap, upside down. Oh. There was a lot of stuff falling out. So first of all, we're going to get ourselves a weird, very cheap, light-weighted multi-game card. The 18-in-1. They have made so many. By the way, they are still selling these things, like these weird multi-game cards. Oh, we're going to get a converter for the European market. It comes with a cable. Oh, this is surprising. Because this time we're going to get the option for mm, stereo sound. That is also like an other issue with these clone systems. Okay, so for a very cheap device, it weighs quite heavy. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of the system itself. It feels quite decent. Oh man, it feels still like an on and off wiggle button. The smell test. Oh, it smells chemical, but kind of nice. High grade, multi-purpose use. Okay, that's kind of weird. At the back, we're going to get input for the DCN, a micro USB. Then we're going to get two for audio or stereo that we're going to check out. Video. Here we're going to get the region switches. So it's interesting that we're going to get two switches over here, not like one that we can slide in one direction. At the bottom, let's see, we're going to get here we need it in five volt. And okay, please turn off the power before plugging cartridges. Yeah, that is an Captain Obvious moment. And at the front, we're going to get two ports for original controllers but that, that, that we're not going to try that one out because i want to play with these fake ones from china all right so let's take a closer look at this let's do a little bit of a wrapping hmm. okay no bone button especially made for the fiho system select the start you need to press them really hard Ooh, they feel really cheap Floating D-pad, feels quite a flimsy, feel kind of flimsy, but we do get a very long cable. Oh, and not forget, nope, it's chemical like always. And for the power, we're going to get a micro USB cable. The adapter I shown you before, and of course, a five volt charger. It's just a five volt phone charger, nothing really special. So if this thing is not included, you can also get yourself another five volt charger. It's a 1000 milliamp, so nothing really special. But let's hook it up and let's see what we're going to get with the games. But I want to bring the testing for these systems just to the next wicked level. I tested it out in the past with some cartridges, but I wanted to test them out with all kinds of versions. And I think I've collected them all now. So with the test, we will include Street of Rage number two, because I love those soundtracks and they're a great test for testing out the sound capabilities of the hardware. Then we're going to get the Bitmap Bureau Xeno Crisis. It's basically like a new game-ish homebrew. Then we're going to get Virtual Racing with the special chip. The chip that not all of the clone system will ha have the support for or the system in general. We're going to get Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the combination card that is also not supported by every single clone system. And not to forget an original multi-game card just to see what happens if we're going to plug it in and we're trying to play some games. 
we're going to get the Mega EverDrive, the original Grix edition. And then we're going to test out because also the EverDrive is not supported by every single system. And then we're going to get the multi-game card from our friends from China. The same story, not always compatible with a system. Also, we're going to test out the fake weird looking Japanese version multi-game card. Then the Sonic 2, when he becomes fluffy or in other words, just a retro game and homebrew game just to see how it works out. And of course, we're going to check out the fake versions, the EverDrives from China just to see if this game works or too. Okay, so let the testing begin on the device and let's see if it's capable of running all of these different cartridges. Okay guys, so for the first test, let's power it on without a cartridge because some of these systems, like this one, does contain some games. Quite interesting, the 19N1, and the game list is quite okay, Tiny Toons, Street of Rage, Sonic, and I don't know if there are like double games, I'm guessing this Mario Sonic game is basically like Sonic 1, but only comes in a different homebrew version, or it just boosts up like a freaking second stage. Hmm. So far good. Hmm. Okay, so next up, the fake multi-game card that came with the system. Comes with a couple of games. It again has Sonic the Hedgehog over here, Golden Axe, a couple of good games. So, not bad at all. It seems to be that the Crick, the original EverDrive, has been supported by the system. So, that is very good. Let's try the fake one. And also the fake version works. So with some of these devices we're going to get, let's say, built in EverDrive. This is not needed because these things are freaking cheap. So for a couple of dollars you can pick up a fake one. And it seems to be working on the FIHO Sega Mega Drive. Next up, Sonic 3 and Knuckles Combination Card. A lot of fake systems do have an issue with this. And the FIHO Sega Game Console has support for playing this game. Nice. Okay, so next up, let's try Xeno Crisis, a game that has been released a couple of years ago. That is normal, by the way. The D pad is not responding that well. Okay, so the new generation multi-card also work. It was more like of a Captain Obvious moment, and yeah, I still wanted to try it out in this video. But okay, so the system, the FIHO, has a compatibility with a lot of different cartridges. So it's quite an interesting thing. Next up, let's try out Street of Rage number two. And also, let's check out if the region system works. Okay, we're going to get a message that the cartridge is not compatible with this system. So let's mess around with the switches on the back and let's reboot it and test some audio. All right, so that happens when I'm putting it on the PAL function. Yeah, that is not great. Okay, so let's try a different system. Okay, let's check out if I'm putting it on Japanese. See if this thing boots up and that it works. Okay, so we can start it up now. If I have the right settings, it will show indeed like the Japanese text, bare knuckles too. Okay, doesn't matter. But see, there's a weird thing like on Paul. So it's a Paul card, but I can't play it on Paul. It goes all messed up. And I've seen it before. Not the first time. But okay, nevertheless, let's check out the soundtracks.
Oh man, even that the Sfyho sounds kinda okay, but listening to some of the game soundtracks, they are completely messed up. And in my opinion, besides that the signal output of the audio and video is not bad at all, and I mean like the quality, I still hear some minor interference, but when you're looking at the quality of the audio, Serious Rage 2, man oh man, that is not the way how you want to play an old school game. In my opinion, just get yourself a normal Mega Drive if you want to have the original blast processing power. Alright, so getting the cartridge out is a pain in the ass. That's just a fact. But let's open it up. I'm guessing that you need to remove the four rubbery feet. Yep, you need to remove those. Then with a the screwdriver, I can just pop out the screws and we can open it up and take a peek inside. Most of these devices don't have a lot inside nowadays, more like one PCB, the biggest PCB because of the big connector for the old school games. Then that's it. All right, so let's open it up. Number four. Get out. Get out. Oh, whoa, quality seal. Don't care about it. There is no warranty left now. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. One screw is not loose. All right. Ooh, be very gentle. Be very gentle. Oh, see, that's the thing that I was so scared of that I'm ripping something apart. All right, so let's take a close look at the top shelves. So first of all, I'm not a big fan of these springs. I have seen it before, but other Chinese fake Sega version, they are a little bit better because they have more tension, but it looks very cheap. And I'm always afraid when you're using this device for a couple of months or so, they will just click out and you just have a dust cover doesn't work anymore. And over here, we're going to get the reset button that's stuck in the shell. We can pop it out by pushing these two together. The power button is loose, so nothing special, but this hot glue madness, oh boy. They just sold a couple of cables on it. Man, oh man, a really cheap way. <laughs> All right, so let's take a close look at the other parts. This PCB is for the output of the signal. Of course, it's going to give us the dip switches over here and the input for the micro USB 5 volt. The big PCB board with the cartridge slot and the chip itself. And then we're having here the on and off switch with the front port that also has the controller ports and the reset button. And they are still using these really weird old school ribbon cables with some freaking hot glue madness. <laughs> yep, that's what I think of it. I just wanted to give you a quick look over here because the TCT 6801 chip, I have seen this before in different models. And it will explain like it gives a slightly better audio quality and video out quality. But yeah, when you're listening closely to it, it doesn't sound like the original authentic Mega Drive sound. Over here, we're going to get the date that has produced. This thing is made in 2019, so it's not quite that old. Yeah. Oh, TCT chip, whatever, man. It doesn't sound like it should be. Okay guys, so this is what we're going to get with some fake blast pressing power from 2019. I can say like the quality of the console, how it feels, it's not that bad. I have seen my share of shitty ple cheap plastic chemical devices, but yeah, it's not like it should be. Like the audio is not right, the signal of the video is not bad at all. It still also hears some interference. Yeah, it's just a cheap device. The compatibility with some games is surprisingly good. That is something also like a big issue with some of the fake systems. So it's not the best and also not the worst version I have seen. The controllers like forget about it, like they are playing like shit. Especially when it comes to D-pad, they are not responsive at all. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become on the Wicked family. And we'll see you in the next video.